So, good evening, everybody. Um, huge shout out as well, as always, to those people who are listening on the replay on the Ats on This TV audio experience on iTunes or Spotify or Stitcher or wherever you get your podcast, SoundCloud or something like that. Those who are here live, huge shout out to you. Um, those who are here live and you maybe don't know, you can catch up on the audio of these broadcasts completely for free. You can do. If you just go to Spotify or iTunes or Stitcher, search for Act on This TV, all one word, and you will find uh, like 200 plus episodes that you can just listen to uh, while you're in the car, while you're walking the dog, while you're in the gym. Everything we talk about on these broadcasts on a Monday night, it's like evergreen, really. Most of it is kind of like, it's never going to go out of out of date. Um, it's all stuff that is just as relevant now as it was a couple of years ago. I was just saying some people in the Facebook chat here have got things next to their name, like anniversary follower. It's like a little badge, which means a thing. It's got a two next to it, which means maybe you've been following the site for a couple of years. I don't know. Michelle Parker's in the house. How are you doing? Um, quite interesting. Uh, so uh, yeah, thanks for those who've been who've been following a uh, following a while. Um, so tonight we are talking all about self tapes, and I released a podcast this morning on actsonthis.tv for premium members. I will show it you now for those who are here and watching in video format. If we go over to the site, this is actsonthis.tv. If you're not aware of it, it's a site I've run since 2011. Um, I sit down on a weekly basis with the biggest casting directors, agents, actors, writers, producers, and just other industry professionals. Um, ultimately, ask them, you know, like we'll just get information out of them about how actors like us can have more success in this industry. If you go to actsonthis.tv, click on what's new at the top here. And then go over to the latest features, you will see the seven golden rules of self tapes brackets that are meant to be broken because rules are meant to be broken. I always believe in that, except like real laws. Don't go and like punch anyone in the face or something like that. That's not a rule that's meant to be broken. Um, but these rules are uh, this was a podcast, a 95 minute podcast I recorded last week with um, one of the stars of Brassic. Who's been watching Brassic on Sky One? with Michelle Keegan and Joe Gilgan. It's hilarious. It's so good. Um, I think episode four airs this week. You can get them all, though, at the moment. I think Now TV, you can, like, binge them all. Um, it's, it's, I, don't, I don't have Sky myself. I have to watch them online. But um, maybe if you've got Sky, you can just go on some sort of on-demand service of Sky as well. Um, it's awesome. Rick plays a fantastic character in it, a bit of a fighter called um, Joe Blaine Jr., um, ends up knocking everybody out, uh, but he ends up. I won't ruin the story for you, but he gets his comeuppance in the end. Um, we, he's also not just an actor. He got this job via a self tape, and Rick actually has a little business on the side where he does self tapes for actors, and he shoots up to sort of ten self tapes for some pretty big names as well. We don't mention them in the podcast. Um, but he does do self tapes for some really well known actors. Um, so there's not many people, you know, that are going to know more about self tapes than Rick. So I brought him down to uh, my apartment and we chatted for yeah over an hour and a half about the seven golden rules of self tapes. So if you like Georgia, who I know is on here tonight, um, who is you know doing a self tape this week, you want to get over to the site and probably listen to this before you do your tape. I'm going to play you tonight a behind the scenes video of me and Rick recording this, which does have some uh, pointers in there, um, but maybe two or three. If you want to get all seven, uh, go get yourself a membership to actsonthis.tv. You'll also get access to literally hundreds of hours um, of other podcasts that I've done with some of like you know some of the biggest agents, um, directors, uh, Rob Collier. Uh, Jordan there, you can see them, those who listen on the audio experience, you won't have a clue what I'm talking about, but there's a picture of uh, Rob and Jordan, you'll know Rob from Downton Abbey, um, Ackley Bridge, he just landed a brand new job today as well on Netflix, um, he phoned me about before, which is uh, pretty cool, you'll be seeing him other stuff, uh, we've got some massive casting directors, Victor Jenkins, uh, great director, you'll see Lewis Arnold there, he's like the director of um, oh, some massive stuff, Dark Money here, that we, we talk about in this Roundtable podcast, but also Broadchurch, Humans, massive stuff, Jill Halfpenny's in that one as well, um, but yeah, you'll get access to everything it's tenner a month guys i mean it's literally two pound fifty a week you can't get a coffee for that cannot make it more affordable for you but yeah if you're an actor and you want to get further in your career faster um come and join the community you'll also get access as well to a private community on here as well in the members area where if you uh yeah if you go into the premium community here it's basically like a private facebook group that's just um exclusive for um members of actsonthis.tv so if you want to get advice on your career as well and you want to do it you know privately away from the world um get yourself involved so uh yeah the the new podcast with um with uh rick on self tapes is in the members area right now so i'm just going to bring myself back on screen going to take a few comments and then i'm going to play you this vlog that came out this morning i know it's only been out a few hours not many people will have seen it i'm going to play it out live tonight so you can see it um i have to listen to this says warren i shy away from self tapes i really dislike doing them for a few reasons i love self tapes warren 
because you get as many t- <laughs> as many takes as you want. I mean, it gets to a point where you go, right, if I do this again, none of these words are making any sense anymore. It's all just like, I've, I've done too many takes. Um, but yeah, you, uh, I don't know, I like the, the relaxed nature of a self-tape um, because then if you get a recall from a self-tape, as well, you've always you've pre-qualified yourself. The casting directors already know you're good enough, you know, and you can do the job. And for me, when I get a recall after the tape, I'm like, well, I actually really have to do is just do what I did in the tape again. When I did that tape a couple of weeks ago and then found myself in Toronto off the back of that tape doing a screen test, um, I knew all I really had to do was what I did in that tape again. That was going to be enough. Um, as it turned out, that is exactly what I did. I had an amazing time. It was probably the best audition I've ever had. I still didn't get the job. <laughs> but, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. You can't always get everything you go for. But, um, but yeah, I do like self-tapes for that reason. The editing bit I need to work on, says Janet. We talk a bit about editing in this podcast as well. Bobby's here as well. Dale's already listened to this podcast. It's a fantastic podcast. Watch and listen to it earlier. Some great tips in there. Dale, like, stay on the broadcast anyway. You're going to end up watching it again. You're going to watch the vlog again. But then afterwards, I'm going to share with you some... Um, I've got some, like, actual kit here. Um, that's really going to help people with their audio on their self-tape. Got some microphones and stuff. I think audio is so important on self-tapes. You can have, you know, a self-tape looking good, but if it sounds shit, you just look and sound shit. Like, you know, no matter what, I I just can't get over audio quality. Um, It's why I'm so, like, up on audio for the podcasts that I do as well. I listen to so many podcasts. And I don't know about you, but, like, if the podcast itself doesn't sound good, no matter what they're saying, I mean, sometimes if it's really, really valuable content, I'll kind of persevere. But so many times, I just want to turn it off. If it sounds like it's been recorded, like in a hugely echoey room on a phone or something like that, I'm like, that's not, you know, just not, I can't deal with that. So I'm going to show you, I'm actually going to give you some model numbers of some stuff as well. Um, that's pretty inexpensive, but will really up your game when it comes to audio. Um, and this stuff works with your iPhone, with your Android phone. Um, you don't need like a you know a flashy, expensive camera, um, but it really will make all the difference when you are you know putting a self tape you know to a casting director. Bobby says hi guys. Not feeling the best today. Um, what's going on, Bobby? Um, uh, what's this? Hope this makes end of my something to do with you with what when when I was in wrestling involving people I knew. Oh, right, some dodgy... Bobby used to be a wrestler, and there's some, apparently some dodgy stuff has been going on. Bobby, hopefully it's uh, it's all good, and um, and this will this will cheer you up. Um, Dale says, you have as many takes as you like, as one and zero nerves, uh, and some hilarious outtakes. What's not to love? Dale posts his outtakes as well, by the way, to his uh, social media accounts. Saw that one you did in the bar, Dale. Very funny. Um, I should start posting the outtakes from the vlog. You watch the vlog now and it all looks so slick. You start, I'm going to start posting more of the outtakes. I only post like one outtake at the end of it, but there is bloody loads. Brendan says, I've listened to half of the self tape podcast today. Seems like casting directors' expectations have become more sophisticated. I don't mind really, but got a bit worried when you were talking about buying backdrops and lighting. Well, I can, I'm, at the end of this, I'm going to talk you through this kit list. Don't get put off by that. It's a piece of piss, Brendan. It's so easy, honestly. Um, the backdrops and lighting... It's really inexpensive, honestly. Even people on a really tight budget, um, I'm going to show you some stuff here that you can get, you know, piece by piece. Maybe, you know, if you've got any birthdays, Christmas is coming up, obviously. People can ask, you know, for a bit of money towards this sort of stuff. It's not going to cost you thousands of pounds. Anywhere near, it's going to cost you a couple of hundred quid to get really kitted out so you can do a quality self say Honestly, it makes a difference. If you are lit well, it just makes a difference. It really does. It shows a lot of professionalism if you do these properly. People can see you better. Um, you will look better on camera, you will sound better on camera, thus your performance will be perceived as better. Honestly, it just will. And if you book a job off a self-tape, even if it's for, you know, a, a one line on a drama, the minimum you're going to get is roughly, I don't know, 650, 750, something like that. If you put 200 quid into, a, into you know, your, uh, your equipment, you're going to get three or four times back what you've spent if you can book a gig off this stuff. Um, it is... Honestly, it's important. Cell takes are going nowhere. They are only going to become more and more in demand. Matt says cell takes are less nervous, uh, less nerve wracking. I find. I agree with you, Matt. Definitely. Particularly if you've got a good mate of yours reading in, who's an actor as well. We talk about that in the podcast. Getting your mum to read in or your sister to read in, who's not an actor, um, it's not a great idea. Create, and we might even do this. Um, at the Manchester meetup for acts on this this Saturday, we'll do a Manchester one, and maybe you London guys at the London meetup can do this. Maybe we'll create a self tape WhatsApp group where if people within the north need people to read in, there'll be people within the group who can you know who live near each other or go right, I'll read in for you. Um, it is really important. It's also good practice as well. 
Um, let's have a look. Uh, Reed's in the house. Reed says, what's Periscope as well? Before, Periscope is just a, an application that Twitter own, Reed. It's a video app um, where you can watch live video. Um, that's all. It used to be what I did these broadcasts on solely, but then I got into Facebook video as well, and they just find it a lot better for keeping up with the con- uh, the, the comments that you guys are putting in. They fade away on Periscope. You can't keep up with them. Stiegid Wayne is in the house. Do most people use their phones for their self-tapes? Says Sharon, a lot of people do. And with this kit, with something like this, audio-wise... Um, those on the audio experience won't have a clue what I'm just holding up. It's called a Smart Lab Plus. I'm going to show you how you can uh, up your game when it even comes to you know self tapes on your phone. Um, uh, let's have a look. Anna says, "Guys, I'm a younger actor. If you have anything available, please DM me." Um, right, it's not. So yeah, so so it's not. This is isn't. A, we're not. Acts on this TV isn't a casting. Uh, resource or a casting website or anything like that. Ultimately, it's a knowledge platform where you will learn more about the industry. But if you um, join the Facebook group, which is free, facebook.com forward slash groups, forward slash ads on this TV, um, a lot of people will post casting briefs and stuff in there. Um, so it's definitely worth um, you know posting your details in there just in case people are casting at the moment. Um, all right, Steve. Um, right, okay, there's loads of comments. I'm going to go through them. There's another 30 I haven't read yet. I'll go through them as this is playing out. I can still read your comments whilst this vlog is playing out. Um, it's about 22, 23 minutes long, I think. Um, I'm going to jump on after this, and we're going to go through um, the kit list. I'm going to share with you exactly what to buy, basically, if you really want to make your self-tapes you know, stand out from the rest. Um, so bear with me. I can still uh, I'll read these comments. I'll comment on them via text, um, and then we'll recap on the comments that have been left during the vlog, after the vlog. All right. Um, enjoy this episode. I think it's pretty good. I'll see you in about 22, 23 minutes. We kind of said, didn't we? If someone had no idea what a self tape was, yeah. What would be the seven things that you would kind of say to them? Welcome everybody to episode 59 of Watch Ross, the one where we help you get to grips with self-tapes. So this is, this is just press record. Oh, Mum! Alright, okay. I just press record. Well if you're going to be looking that way, you want the voice to become... No, no, I need you to stand there because it's eye line. So here we are, ruining my flat, setting it up as a self-tape studio because the topic for this week's vlog is gonna be self-tapes. We would normally do an intro outside, it was a little bit different. Um, It's throwing it down outside. If we take Petch outside and get him wet, or we feed him after midnight, it's like a gremlin, he starts kicking off and killing people. So we can't have that. And yeah, we're gonna be talking all about self-tapes today because I've I've seen a massive surge from casting directors requesting self-tapes, particularly for first round auditions. Um, They've been around for like two years or so, but I've never seen more requests for self-tapes than I've seen at the moment. Petch did four in a week a couple of weeks ago. One that I recently did got me the biggest opportunity of my acting career and a screen test for a massive American show in Toronto. Um, I actually came second, like didn't get the job. But you know what they say, Petch? Second schmeckend. No, they don't say second schmeckend. They say first the worst, second the best, <laughs> third the one with the hairy chest. So, um, so I'm not bitter about that. And um, actually talking about rejection, we filmed a video recently on, uh, that we're gonna put out on Instagram Um, on rejection. Here's a little clip of it. Sometimes you just got to get knocked down lower than you have ever been in order to stand up taller and stronger than you have ever been before. If you really wanted that gig, you know, and you've hit your rock bottom, you need to use that right now as the foundation to build your future success upon. If you want to see the rest of it, go to at Ross A. Grant and at Act On This TV on Instagram. Please follow me share that. I think it's super, super valuable. Um, so yeah, we're going to be talking all about self-tapes. I've had loads of emails from actors asking me how they do a self-tape, what background they should use, lighting, you know, cameras, audio, all this kind of stuff. 
and we're going to be covering that in a podcast exclusively for Acts on This TV. If you're not a member yet, get yourself over to the website and sign up. Our special guest is a guy who knows loads about cell tapes as well. He's an actor who you will see in Brassic at the moment. If you've been watching Brassic on Sky One, the Joe Gilgan, Michelle Keegan comedy, hilarious. He plays a character in that called Joe Blaine Jr. He's a fighter, looks mean as hell, um, but he's actually a lovely guy in real life. Rick S. Carr. I don't know what the S stands for, Pitch. Self-tape. <laughs> Rick Self-tape Carr is coming in today to tell us how he got the job for Brassic via self-tapes. Multiple self-tapes, actually. And he's actually got a side hustle as well, where he films self-tapes now for actors on the side. Pitch does this as well. If you are struggling for self-tapes, you know, and you don't want to do your own, even after listening to this podcast, Reach out to Petch or people like Rick, um, they can do cell tapes for you. You don't need to buy all this equipment. And it's not expensive, by the way, don't get it twisted. This background is like 40 quid. This light was about 60 quid. This microphone you can get for like 50 quid. If you get a job off the back of one cell tape, you know, if you've invested in this kit, it's going to pay you hundreds of pounds. It will cover all of that investment, you know, if you want to do it yourself. If not, these guys, you know, will film a cell tape for you. So uh, Rick's going to be here in a minute. We're going to have to <laughs> take all of this stuff down that we just put up for the start of the vlog, set the mics up, and uh, yeah, this is the Self Tape Podcast. Matt, I've just pressed record. Yeah. I've just pressed record. We've been silent. For, no, seriously, we've been silent for about a minute, and then I've pressed record, and you just start speaking. So, Rick S. Carr, welcome to my apartment. Welcome to Acts on This TV. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for coming around. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's such a lovely apartment. Well, I appreciate that. You know, it's, it's very uh, nice. We should probably do a separate podcast. Um, I think so. On interior design, cribs, cribs. Act on this, Cribs. We just filmed the intro to this vlog. This podcast is all around uh, whose series going off now. Pet, will you? It, honestly, hell? it's like literally we do the podcast. And he just sits there and just plays on his phone. Just can't like, get the stuff, can you? Turn Siri off, Pet. And um, we on the vlog, we were just talking. We were talking all about the the whole point of this podcast. We're going to be talking a lot about self tapes today. You're an yep. actor. You do self tapes to people. You kind of got into that kind of by accident. Uh, we're going to be looking at all of that. How self tapes have helped you land jobs. Um, you literally just got a text on your phone right now from a client who you did a self tape for this morning, saying they've got a meeting with the director now. Yep, absolute win. But we said, what does um, the S stand for in Rick S Car? Because Petch ah. went, it's obviously self tape. It is Rick self tape car. That's <laughs> it. How did you know? <laughs> It's Stephen. 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 Yes. Phone right. Is that again. your phone as well? Right. Bloody get out. Bloody hell. Petch, get out. Honestly. It'd be like, it's me agent. But it's not even that. Honestly. Right. He's gone anyway. <laughs> Sorry about that, podcast <laughs> listeners. So, Rick, yeah, for those who um, are hearing from you for the first time today, obviously, you know, you're, you're an actor um, based here in Manchester. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all in this together, all jobbing actors, looking for that next gig. Um, as this is going out, as we're literally recording this, um, you are appearing right now in Sky One's Brassic. Yes. Um, as an awesome character, um, Joe Blaine Jr., he looks, it was, it's so interesting because he just looks like such a mean... Looks like me. He looks like you, yeah. but he's a completely different character to you. Yeah, tell us about Brassic, how that came about. Um, initially, it was a self tape um, to get in the room, and the self tape. Oh, phone's going there. I know my my phone's going. Honestly, just carry on. It's not you. It. It's Petch. <laughs> oh god. Um, yeah. So um, initially, it was a self tape. Um, and I think a lot of programs these days now they're going to get you on a self tape first before they get you in the room. It's just happening more and more. Self tapes have been around for like as a thing for a couple of years in the UK now. They were massive in America before that, but um, I have never seen more mm, people being, being relied asked on for self tapes now. now. Yeah. a lot more yeah um so yeah initially um if you've seen the episode by the time this goes out it will have been aired episode three yeah yes um the opening episode the opening part of the episode is me screaming at the tv and it's meant to be like a youtube video and that was the self-tape scene that i had to do for the um for the audition basically yeah. and i made it a little bit different it was a bit risky but it was something that i thought worked with it so when i sent the initial self-tape off it wasn't just a self-tape of me doing the scene it was also edited to look like it was a youtube video as it was in the script yeah so there's little things like that which kind of i think helped me get me in the room a little bit it's going um, a little bit above and beyond yeah it just i imagine it probably stood out a little bit more than a normal self-tape so it's just little touches like that which i think helped get me in the room and then once i was in the room um the rest 
was history really but then after that even though you were asked to film a few more tapes weren't you correct yeah so basically i think with my role because it's such um an imposing character what they wanted to do was they was either gonna use a fighter and teach him to act or use an actor and teach him to fight fortunately i've got fighting background so it kind of worked so we're going to dive into seven we, we came up yesterday when we had a brew with kind of like seven we don't want to say golden rules because there's, you know nothing is like is permanent you know these these mm. will kind of change but just give people you know we're going to talk about seven things that you really need to consider we kind of said didn't we if someone had no idea what a self take was yeah what would be the seven things that you would kind of say to them yeah that, and, that are kind of you know most of them are the non-negotiables in terms of if you just want to do a solid self tape these are seven things that we're going to talk about now um get a pen and notepad out you know if you've never done a self tape before make some notes mm -hmm. um we're going to share our knowledge with you rick how many self tapes a week do you do for other people because this has been a thing that you've kind of fallen into by accident isn't it more or less yeah um so last week for example I did around seven yeah wow seven yeah the week before that it varied from five to ten so is it depends on this morning before you came in exactly yeah on this morning well two a few scenes yeah two yeah um, one yesterday it depends on how busy the breakdowns are that are going out there as well and you know what's actually being cast at the minute because if nothing's being cast you're not going to be doing any self tapes so it just depends how busy it is as well with the casting breakdowns that are going out so it varies from week to week really but i think what one thing we did say yesterday is regardless of all the equipment and all the bells and whistles of a self-tape is mm -hmm. what the casting directors are looking for and i think you have to jump into that mindset to be able to feel comfy knowing what you're doing before you even yeah before you even set anything up and you've got the you've got the sides through and you've got the brief it's like actually right what do i want to achieve in this tape you know yeah. ultimately, what do i want to portray what do i need to show the casting director because the casting director inevitably they're looking at can you do the job what they're looking for can you do the job what does he look like or what does she look like and can i see them doing that role yeah. so let's dive in then to point number one and this is you know what this is just something that i can't hammer home enough for not just self tapes but just for every single freaking part of your career every ca every casting director i get on for a podcast tells me this is the number one thing that lets actors down the most so let's just talk about this number one rick is be prepared preparation yeah be prepared so what so what so how how do you get prepared for a self tape then i make sure i know the character inside out yep every little angle that potentially could be explored i explore it and then I pick the best bits from each part and think, right, this is my character. And then I'll run with it. But if they give you extra, um, you know, if they give you the full script, you'd be a fool not to read it. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, if you've got, if you get the luxury of the full, the full episode. And even if you're not in the whole episode, you get a feel for how the program is and you get a feel for what they're going for, which then helps you when it comes to your scene. Is it going to tie in with the rest of it? Yep. And I think that is, that, you know, they've not not give you the script for no reason. You know, they've, they've given it you for a reason, yep. for that particular reason. You know, can you make your character fit in within the realms of what's going on here? Yeah. No, it's a massive, massive thing that, yeah, I find a lot of people, when I used to work um, as a casting assistant, people would come in and you could tell whether, whether they knew the story and they'd yeah, read yeah. the rest and of if, it. If they ask a simple question, like, what did you think of the rest of it? And you've only read your part. Is that a risk you want to take in the room? Yeah, no, definitely not. And there was, you know, and it, you know, even if you haven't, just say, just say you have. Try and blag it a little bit. Don't go in and say no. I definitely haven't read it. It's a risky game, you know. Um, a risky game. But yeah, um, it can inform if you do read it. There can be something three, four, five scenes later that informs, um, you know, something in your scene that you would never have known about otherwise. Yeah. Um, you know, it could be. I, I get it as well, where you know you do only want to read your part because you don't want to let the rest influence you. I do get that side of it as well, but. Me personally, if the full thing sent to me, I'm going to read it. I would always read it because because there, there was uh, there's been episodes with that I've done of stuff where people have commented on my character in later scenes and they've said things like, "Yeah, God, he, he seemed a bit shifty, didn't he?" And you go, "Ah, wait a minute, right? I need to play the shifty then because mm -hmm. otherwise, why would they be saying that three scenes later?" I know you've got like a dedicated room in your place for for yeah. self so you don't need to do this, but I've bought a pretty huge, like a six foot by six foot pop up, like um background and it was cheap and you can it was, change them can't you yeah well this the, was the colors and you clip them on well this is like just a like a, almost like a you know the it just pops up it folds down into a little circle into a little bag and it pops up massive green on one side if you want to do green screen um you don't have to obviously do that and then it's just i've got a nice lovely like silvery gray mm. um, on the other side 
Um, it's quite reflective. So when you shine a light on it, you know, it gets very flattering, nice soft light bounces off it. Um, and yeah, it was like 43 quid, you yeah. know, off eBay. Um, no, off Amazon, I got that one, but you can get, I've seen them on eBay as well. Um, Amazon and, and eBay are perfect for, if, if you're going to reinvest into yeah, all this sort of stuff. career, you know, Amazon and eBay, it's all there. Definitely. And From um, tripods to the pop-up thing that you've just been on about, you know, it, it, they're all there. Um, so you don't have to spend a fortune, guys. And if you're like, you know what, I live in, because I only live in a two-bedroom apartment here. You know, there is a couple of plain walls. Before I got this, I used to use those. Um, but I was aware it's like, you know what, you can kind of still see the picture hook, even though I took the picture down. Yeah. Uh, you can see a bit of the blinds. It's not like a nice, you know, super, super plain, non-distractive background. Point number four, Rick. Point number four would be, I think we touched on it a little bit earlier, but you <laughs> lighting. Lighting, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Whether that's natural sunlight, and you know you can see you and everything's clear and it's not blurry and they're not having to what's going on there or i've got soft boxes yeah so explain to people what that is they'll be like what's so a soft, box? soft boxes are just lights that pop up on a tripod and again we spoke about earlier from amazon they probably cost me about 60 quid 70 quid for two for two yeah, yeah. for two and they pop down you get they come in like little bags as well if you want to if you know you was to bring it to someone else's house or you was moving it around or whatnot so easily storaged as well yeah um but yeah they just stay up in my room in the um dedicated self-tape room in the self-tape den yeah. um but yeah honestly but like it's important and they're very easy to get hold of so you know um i've heard you speak earlier on a podcast where you've said you know people land a job and then they go on a holiday to Ibiza. Yeah, or they waste the money they've earned you look by on some Instagram bullshit. And, you know, they're buying X, Y, and Z. You know, if you're in this industry, you want to reinvest back into the industry. And, you know, you might reinvest into all this equipment and you might not get a self-tape for six months. That's just the way the industry is. But when that self-tape does come along, if you've ticked all them boxes, you know, you're in a great position. Yeah, honestly, don't, yeah, like, just please, you know, if you if you are in, in playing the long game, don't go game, and waste, man. you know, I'm not interested in short term dollars. Mm -hmm. I've never been when my agent phones me up and she's like, oh, you know, we, we, you've got this job, we're negotiating this deal. I'm literally like, Jane, I don't bother you go and deal with that. Like, I'll just accept whatever you think's right. You yeah. know, I'm just not interested in just a short term gain and yeah. any money I do earn. Um, I mean, this kit on the table, you know, and, and you know, the lights and the camera that's shooting this right now. Very impressive. These way. microphones, like thousands and thousands of pounds it's not like you know i was just suddenly gifted this and just yeah. lo you know loads of money um you know i've worked bloody hard for this but i've just gone you know what the only way for me to reach the next level is to reinvest yes um and those soft boxes are great i use those for years i've got some led panels now yeah they're great um, they're a little bit you know a little bit smaller and you know easier to kind of you know set up but those soft boxes um i just gave to i've had and they last forever i just gave two to petch um that i used to use and yeah they were about for, for both of them i think that was back in the day they're about 70 or 80 quid they're a bit cheaper now there's a company called photo cell uh, they do a lot of stuff on amazon yeah, um and yeah. uh, these are dead easy to use guys you literally you know just build it in a few minutes you know plug it in um and they just got a huge diffuser on the front of it like a big piece of material white material mm -hmm. um, and it just shines a lovely soft it's called a soft box because it shines a lovely soft light at you very flattering makes you look a lot better on camera, doesn't it? Yeah, they, do. <laughs> they do. They bring your eyes out a lot, which yeah. is great. And you can, depending on the, the actual scene itself, you know, I did one earlier and it was meant to be quite a dark scene and it was quite intense and we were not too sure what was going on with it. So we only had to use one. And yeah. We angled it so that the shadow really cast on his face brilliantly. And when you watched it back, it looked beautiful. It mm -hmm. really did look beautiful. I was really impressed with it and how it came out. And it's just simple little tricks with lights as well that you can do. Yeah, it's interesting because if you are relying on daylight, which is great, you know, if you're just filming in front of a big open window, never shoot into the light because you just look very shadowy and silhouetted. But if you're, if you're using, you know, the window to give you the light, um, obviously you can't move the sun. Um, so you can't be quite as, as uh, you know, inventive with, with the, you know, the, yeah. the angles of stuff. Whereas if you've got your own lights and you can position them around, like Rick said, and you want to make it a bit more sinister, you want to cast shadows on half of somebody's face, you've got a lot more control and over that. Number five sound yep audio is a big issue i think i think audio to a certain sense more important than picture if yes. you can see someone but it sounds shit, you mm -hmm. want to turn it off the thing is with sound as well if something sounds really bad it can make you look really shit. yeah regardless how good you are if it sounds shocking it's going to make you look shocking That's as well the background noise like and you can't yeah, hear the person because speak. they're not going to be able to see past that no they're not going to be able because they're going to watch it and it's going to be an annoyance to them that the sound's crap and they're just going to switch it off. Yeah. So yeah. What, what advice would you have for people for audio? And I'm going to give you guys some very specific things to buy now if you've got about 75 quid to spend that will just, you'll never need to worry about it again.
There you go, folks. So I don't know how many clips you just saw there, but you saw a few clips of what was a cracking 95-minute podcast rate. How was that for you? It was great. Not a bad back now. It was great. Yeah, you did just have to do some stretches on the floor because we sat down for too long. Um, listen, we just want to give you a bit of exclusive value on this vlog that we didn't cover in the podcast. There's a couple of things that, that came up during that podcast I want to expand on and a few things that, that Petch and uh, and Rick have been asked by actors who have been you know, doing self tapes with these guys. These guys film self tapes every week for people um, that we just kind of want to clear up um, and tell you ultimately that they're, although we just created you know a podcast on you know seven like rules, you know golden rules of self tapes that that rules are meant to be broken and sometimes you can you know break these rules to get a better result. The first thing uh, that Petch uh, said that he's been asked a lot is if the character you are playing opposite is say, you know, if it's a man or a woman, is it all right for a man to read in if the part is for a woman? And it's like, you know, I've had that before. It's like, you know, there's been a flirty scene where I've gone, right, I need to do the cell tape, but I don't have a woman to read in. Um, you know, I've had to do that with a male reader. It's acting, in it? Just act. What do you reckon, Rick? Exactly that. You know, if you haven't got a girl that can help you read in, then... You can hold this. Oh, thank you. I thought it was like a proper interview. You do this. No, this. get that on your chin <laughs> and you can hear you. Go on. No, if you haven't got a girl that can help you read in, then, like Ross said, just act. I'm sure you can do it in front of a guy or not. I've flirted with all my friends and it's great. Yeah. It's brilliant. I fancy some of them that I have to flirt with them. It's great. Yeah, I see. Rick will flirt with anybody. Um, the other thing was, um, yeah, the second thing uh, that came up was, Petch, what was it? Accents. Accents, yeah. Mm. Accents, right? If you've got to do an accent in a self-tape, do you do the accent for the slate at the beginning where you're saying, hi, my name is, my agent is, etc." The other day we had a tape that I was doing where I had to play a geek and I was using Petch's glasses. Um, they're not that geeky, Petch, but they made me look like a geek. And I was like, do I keep the glasses on in the eye den or do I take them off to show them what I like without them? I decided to keep them on because I wanted them to kind of get that geek feeling from the off. But again, I don't think there's any you know, necessarily like hard and fast rule. Rick's take. Yeah, it's your preference. If you want to do your normal accent so they can hear that, you are from Manchester or from wherever you're from, and then you jump into another one, you might open a new door for them thinking, oh, he's good. Or then again, you might open a door for them thinking, oh, I can actually hear the normal accent. It's a tricky one. The, the, there's nothing to say, yes, do your, um, your slate and your accent, but I don't know. It's a tricky one. I think, personally, I've done my, my accent just normally in, yeah. in the slate and then gone into the accent in the actual take. But again, it's something that... It's, there's no right or wrong answer with that one. If you want to do an accent in your slate, then do an accent in your slate. It keeps you in it, keeps them in it, doesn't break the illusion, so. Yeah. Good, and lastly, yeah, if you're doing a conventional self-tape, you know, which is going to be nine times out of ten what you're doing, a pretty regular, you know, standard scene, what we've just recorded, like, if you follow those seven steps, I guarantee you, you will have a really solid product at the end of it. However, we were just talking, there are occasions where you will be asked to do something that is not conventional at all. Petch did a cell tape for a girl, an actress, just a couple of weeks ago, where they filmed it in a bath. Nothing weird. <laughs> Nothing weird going on. But she was, you know, her character was... She, was, was she committing suicide, Petch? God, was committing... I mean, that's a proper... That's high stakes for a cell tape, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but she decided to do it in the bath, you know, that would have a lot more impact than somebody acting, committing suicide in front of a, you know, a lovely grey background that's really well lit. So there are occasions where you can throw these rules out of the window, you know, when it matters. You did a tape for Jillings recently where he was in the garden or something, didn't you? Yeah, it was for a motion capture video game and it was completely, the majority of it was, I think they wanted to see how he looked, what he was doing. Can they believe him in that particular scenario? And a lot of it was, you know, kicking down doors, running around with a gun, checking scenarios out, checking the place out, you know, and in the realms of a self-tape inside a small room with a clear background, yeah, you can do it, but if they can see it and, you know, you can make it believable in your back garden, do it in your back garden. Yep, definitely. There have been people who have done like mega, we're just talking like mega production value self tapes where they've actually gone out into the woods, you know, for the Game of Thrones auditions and stuff. And they've really like created all my short films um, as their self tapes. Um, there are, like I say, you know, there are no right and wrong answers to this. What I would say is for those who are like, you know, overwhelmed by this is just pick up a camera and just try, like just try different things, taste different things, see what works for you. 
um, you know, the more proficient you can get at this and the more kind of, you know, uh, used to it, I guess, the more well, well versed and prepared you are. Preparation was a big thing we spoke about in the podcast then. Um, the better the results are going to be and you're going to feel less self-conscious on camera. You're just going to get far, far better results. Um, go listen to the full podcast there. 95 minutes of fire. Um, go to actsonthis.tv. If you're an actor and you're not a member of this website, you're missing out on like three, 400 hours worth of golden advice from the biggest actors, agents, writers, casting directors, producers, etc. in this industry. We've got some fantastic content on the site already. More coming up every week. Um, it's £2.50 a week. I mean, I don't know. Where, where can you get better value than that, Rick? You can't. Little. Not even little, I would say. <laughs> um, so get over, get on the website, and um, yeah, you know, uh, let us know your thoughts. Social media is up on the screen right now. If you, at the end of this, are like, you know what, I never want to do sell tapes for myself. Um, I think it's a mistake, but if you, you know, if you don't want to get involved and actually learn how to do it yourself, Rick, Petch, people like these guys are all over the country who will film your sales sites for you. Reach out to these guys on social media. Uh, if you're in the north particularly, Rick and Petch, great guys to go to. Um, let me know if there's people down south doing this as well. I know Fraser in the Actsonless community um, does a lot of this, you know, this sort of stuff down south with Mr. Self Tape as well. Um, there are options out there, but I just think if you can bring the power in your own hands, it's the better in it. I think, you know, you're more in control of your career there. We're going to be back next week. Don't know what with. We've got some great guests lined up. I'm not going to tease you with them yet because, I mean, one of them is massive if I can pull it off, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Um, I think I will, fingers crossed. Um, but, yeah, we're going to be back with some more great content. Please subscribe. Share this with a friend if you think it's going to be useful to them. Um, and uh, let us know if we can help you. Yeah, anything we can do for you, you know, please reach out. Got a little catchphrase to end with Rick. I should put this on every cell tape I do, actually, by, at the end of every take. I'll just be uh, like, right, thanks for watching, guys. Um, you know what it is, don't you? Oh, come on. Yeah, he's forgot already. Bloody hell. Of course he bloody knows. Typical actor, forgetting his lines. I oh, know, honestly. In, we're not prepared. Hey, listen, um, thanks so much for watching. We'll be back next week in three, two, one. Bye for now. <laughs>Thank you so much for watching this episode. It really would mean the world to me if you would leave a comment telling me what you enjoyed and what you would like to see more of next time. If you want to catch more episodes, head over to facebook.com forward slash what. I'm going to cut in there before everybody thinks that the video is actually ending. That was just the end of the vlog. If you want to go and watch every episode, that was episode 59. If you want to go and watch every episode of the vlog I've done so far, go over to youtube.com forward slash watch Ross. Do subscribe, share it with your mates. Um, there's loads of content there. You'll see behind the scenes of like so many of the acts on this um, podcast that I've done um, I think sometimes it's really valuable to see the people I'm interviewing like on video as well you know a lot, a lot of people want to listen to the audio because they can hear it when they're out and about doing other stuff so it doesn't take up more time but if I'm bringing casting directors on um, you're going to want to know what these people look like for when you go for a casting or if you're at an event and you see these people you need to recognize these people um, there have been many stories I've been told <laughs> where people have gone into a casting and um, mistaken the casting director as just somebody else who just worked in the building someone went in once about an hour early thought the casting director was just someone who just worked on reception um, and asked them if they could get a cuppa oh can you just make us a coffee and the, <laughs> the casting director is like um yeah, all right, <laughs> kind of a bit weird. The actor didn't know that was the casting director. Obviously, they just thought it was just somebody who worked there on reception. Um, so do go and watch those videos. Um, yeah, there is, I mean, that was a 95-minute podcast. You saw like, well, you heard 15 minutes of it there. Do get yourself over uh, to Acts on this TV. This is me in the members area now. If you've not got a membership, just get a membership. It's 10 quid a month. If you want to save, you can get a membership for 90 quid a year, so you get three months free effectively. Um, but for those who are members, um, go into the members area and you'll see at the top there, featured with actors. I mean, there's loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of podcasts in it. It just goes on and on forever. Um, hundreds of hours worth with the biggest names in the industry. But yeah, Rick's episode is uh, at the top of the actors um, section there features with actors so you'll see it there you can have a listen to that and then um, you can scroll through all these uh, all these other ones as well um, but do go listen to that after this um, what I want to do with you now yeah I want to just share with you um, some kit basically we go into more depth in the podcast I'll probably end up putting a kit list together um, a written one with links to actual just direct to items uh, prices on Amazon kind of change quite regularly though so I can't always give you an exact price if I did that um, but really the, the one thing that people always get stumped on I think is audio um, everyone's got a phone that's decent enough quality to film a self tape on but people get really stuck on audio and they end up using the audio on their phone it doesn't sound 
that good when you're especially when you've got a reader who is going to be reading to the left or the right of the camera they're closest to the phone when they're reading if they're a bit loud they can really overshadow your performance because the camera is further away from you than it is to the reader so um i noticed somebody in the comments was saying you know use rode do a great um shotgun microphone it's called a, a, a rode um oh what's it called i've got a couple of them um a video mic pro and it's more uh, it's a shotgun mic meaning that it's, uh, it's it's directional so basically it's an end address microphone it just picks up a bit like this one now if i go off the if i go off mic now can you hear the difference here it's hardly picking anything up you know because it's not picking anything up until i'm actually speaking into the end of it um it means it's much more directional um and it means that it only picks up what it's shooting at so they're quite good and um, they're quite expensive i'm going to show you now really um a much cheaper still by road but a much cheaper way to um to do this with a lav mic um that road do road sponsor ads on this i'm not promoting them because i get paid anything for this or anything like that but they just make the best microphone kit and the cheapest in the industry i think in terms of the most affordable but innovative kit that gives you great results this mic i'm speaking to right now is called a road podcaster the microphones you saw me use on the podcast is are made by Rode. Um, the wireless microphone I use for the vlog is Rode. And these things here, Rode Smart Lav Pluses, are absolutely brilliant for your self-tapes. And I'll go on Amazon in a minute and we'll walk through it and I'll show you how much they are. Um, you can get a really decent setup um, for about under 70 quid, I think. A Smart Lav, I've got one here in this bag, I've got a few of these, basically is a wired lapel microphone um let's have a look i'll show you it it's the same capsule that's on this wired one that's on the wireless one i use on the vlog um it's a really really decent um capsule it sounds great it's broadcast quality really this is brand new this has never been taken out of the bag so you can see it's a wired uh you see there that's the actual mic itself where is it on the camera there um and on the end of this is something called a trrs uh, input which is just it plugs into your phone plugs into directly into your iphone or into uh, your android as well now you'll see the cable on that's not very long so what you want to get this is called the smart lab plus you want to get an extension cable for this called an sc1 it's a six meter extension cable so what you can do this would only work really for i mean 90 percent of self tapes are going to be you stood up stationary or sat down very few are going to be you running around the room you know like that motion capture uh, audition that that uh, rick was talking about so what i do before i had a wireless one what i used to do and it gave me great results was i would pin this i would like clip this to my t-shirt i would run this wire down my back connected to the sc1 then what I would do is I would run, that's an SC1, six meters of cable. I would run that across the floor um, and into my, directly into my iPhone. Don't need an adapter, it goes directly into the iPhone. And then basically um, you are mic'd up. The reader is quite far away. So the reader's lines do not overshadow yours. Um, and your audio is absolutely crystal clear. Um, what you will need, just a heads up as well, is if you are using a DSLR camera, which I see a few people on here are, if it's not going directly into your phone, you'll also need one of these. It's called an SC3. And that's basically just to connect it to your um, your DSLR, just so your DSLR can understand the input. So you've got the Rode Smart Lab Plus as the mic. You've got the SC1 as the extension cable. And only and only if you're using a DSLR, you will need the SC3. Now, depending on your costume, you can just clip what I do. You'll always see it. I just clip the mic onto my T-shirt, basically. But if you are you women, you know, if you're using costume that's not, you know, blokes attire is probably a bit easier sometimes. You know, girls, if you're wearing something that's, you know, you're like, where do I actually attach this to? You can also get from Rode these things called Invisilabs. Now, what it is, is the lav mic pushes into one of these little clear plastic things. And then you can literally just get a plaster, a piece of plaster, and you can just tape it under your clothing. Or if you had a strap, you know, if you're on a dress, you could tape it under the strap. And because it's inside the, it's protected inside the clear plastic thing, the, your clothes rubbing on it won't make any difference. It won't make it go or anything like that, like you would normally get if you just tried to, you know, stick it to yourself without it being in one of these. So they're all from Rode. Um, and I mean, let's just go on Amazon now and see how much this stuff is. Cause I don't think it's that expensive, but it will give you really, really, um, decent quality, 
um, sound. So if I have a look on Amazon here, and we're just going to search for now there was initially a smart lav as well we don't want the smart lav we want the smart lav plus so make sure you go for the road smart lav plus not the original smart lav the smart lav will be cheaper but it's not as good so here's the smart lav plus at the moment on amazon it's 47 quid right so we'll get a little running total of this i'm just going to jump into the comments um, and see what's uh, what's going on Got someone saying they're sick. Kev's having issues with his signal. It's all looking good for me, Kev. I've got a green light. Is everyone else all right, signal-wise? Um, it will be... Um, it, it might be, again, Facebook's bloody servers, unfortunately. I'm green here, though. Um, yeah, and also Alice has made, has made a good point there. On iPhone, if you've got an iPhone X or something like that and you need a lightning adapter... Um, you get one with your phone that goes three and a half millimeter jack into your lightning adapter. You get that with your phone. I should have mentioned that. Cheers for bringing that up, man. Um, yeah, forgot about that. But yeah, that will still plug directly into your uh, into your iPhone. Um, every sketch I did was using the uh, Smart Lab Plus with the SC SC One. It's a nice one, Mark. And your stuff was always awesome, man. Was also really um, yeah was was really you know really really clear. Um, definitely. If anyone is having issues with the uh, stream tonight, yeah, just refresh the page. Um, hopefully, you'll you'll get a better connection. Um, fingers crossed. Um, although Janet's been kicked out a couple of times, I've not been kicking you out personally, Janet. So hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully it'll it'll stand up. Um, Inez, Inez, Inez is, is losing us as well. Let me just double check. Everything's good here. It's not a lot. Yeah, it is good here. I'm getting decent frame rate as well. There's not a lot I can do about that. It's not really in my control, unfortunately. But um, but do refresh out, and there will obviously be a uh, be a replay of this as well, which will hopefully be flawless. Um, but that's the Smart Lab Plus. Um, let's have a look for the Rode SC One. So so far we've got forty seven quid. The SC One is there, and that's what fifteen sixty. Let's call it sixteen quid. So that's fifty seven. That's sixty three pounds, and then the road sc3 if you're going to use a dslr camera is this little bad boy here so 63 pounds plus eight pound 90 so call it nine quid so we've got what 72 quid and if you really wanted to go all in and you got the invisilav in lav, which are these little things i mean it's 13 pound 60 in it so um, what did we say? Seven, it says 85 quid, basically, for your audio setup. And you might be like, oh, it's 85 quid. That's loads of money. But honestly, what, you know, do you want to do you want to stand out for the right reasons, you know, for having decent audio? Do you want to screw up, you know, the, the few self tapes that you get a year that could lead to a job that's worth a few grand? Um, I just think if you've got the money have a, or, you know, if you're struggling just have a look. I say this all the time, don't I? Audit what you're spending money on. When I looked back at how much money I was spending coffee on, it's ridiculous. Uh, I was spending, yeah, how much money I was spending on coffee, sorry. How much money I was spending coffee on? How much money I was spending on coffee? Insane. Four quid a cup, you know, just mental. Um, have a look at, you know, what you're doing, basically, where your money's going. Because if you're not inviting, you know, investing it in your career, so many actors are like, oh, this is all I want to do. This is all I was born for. You know, I'm don't. I, I'm no good at anything else. And I see him just spending money on dumb shit, and then complaining they've got no money for acting classes or a two pound fifty a week act on this membership with access to the biggest names of the business. I'm like, you just ain't got your priorities straight. What you're saying, what's coming out your mouth is absolutely not congruent with what's what what you're doing in your career. You're lying to yourself. Um, so that audio wise is a uh, is yeah it's just is good. Explore Rhodes entire uh, Rode R O D E. Explore Rhodes entire um, you know uh, product line. They you know they do some absolutely incredible microphones. Um, so can you get a quote and model? Was what so did you did you see that Kev on Amazon? What was doing? So yeah, you got the Rode Smart Lab Plus forty seven quid. Um, you got the SC one and the SC three. The SC one is the uh, extension cable i think it was how much was it 15 quid something like that the whole lot basically with so the sc1 is the extension cable the sc3 is the connection if you want to connect it to a, a dslr camera and the invisilav is if you want to stick the labs to your skin 
You don't have to do that though. Um, the whole lot was like 80, 85 quid, wasn't it? So um, it is affordable. It's cheap. Um, you can definitely, you know, I'm sure it's not going to break the bank for a lot of people. Um, yeah, Joe, road, R-O-D-E, not spelt like an actual road. Um, Matt said he logged out of Facebook, logged back in, and it's fine where he is. That's good. Um, so, yeah, hopefully it's just that Facebook was having a few issues with their uh, with their servers. Um, but, yeah, um, that was just the audio stuff that I wanted to share with you. Soft boxes we speak about in the... Uh, you know, in the vlog there as well and on the podcast. Um, that's for your lighting. Um, they're fifty nine ninety nine. If you search for, if I go back to Amazon and just search for the word photo cell, it's photo uh, S E L photo cell and just search for lights and all we're looking for. Oh uh, no, not those. I've clearly it's it's auto corrected that for me. I didn't need you to do that for me, computer, thank you. Photo cell, there you go. <laughs> Um, it's the first result there, fifty nine ninety nine for two soft boxes. Again, absolute bargain, you know, and they last you years. The two that I just gave to Petch, my cameraman, as spares because I bought some LED panels. You don't need to go LED. They're more expensive. You don't need to do that. Um, I've, I'd had oh, six, seven years and the bulb still hadn't gone on them. He's still using them now. These things just like last forever. You get about 5,000 hours per bulb. So you're probably not going to be, you know, doing 5,000 hours of self-tapes anytime soon. Most self tapes might take you two hours. So you could do two and a half thousand of the bad boys before those go. So for 60 quid, total no brainer. Um, and the backdrop, um, yeah, I just uh, Google, not Google, go on Amazon and just search for uh, pop up uh, video background, I think, or something like that. Let's have a look. There's loads, but the one that I got was this one. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was this one here. I pay 42 quid for it. It's only 39.95 at the moment. Um, this is 1.5 meters by two meters. So it's nearly five foot by six feet. So you can do a full self tape standing up on that. Um, you would never really need to do that though. Um, but yeah, and that's got a, and that's, that's a different one. That's blue on one side, gray on the other. I got, um, that's blue and one side green on the other. I got a green and gray one, which is that one. Just because I think it's better. Green's great. Green screen if you just want to muck around with video and you know put yourself wherever. 1.5 meters by two meters. That's the one that I got. Yeah, 39.95 again. Um, but the grey, I just think grey looks wicked. I think it just makes you pop on grey. And it's nice because it's a, uh, a light colour when you're throwing light on it with a soft box. Just it's a really nice soft sheen to it as well. Um, you know, that's how I do all my self tapes with uh with that one. So Whole setup, honestly, a couple of hundred quid, and you uh, and you're good. You don't need to worry about you know spending thousands of pounds or anything like that. Um, but if you really want to hear everything that you know, and we go into a lot of depth, a lot of detail, um, yeah, get yourself over to actsonthis.tv um, and get yourself a membership if you've not got one already. Um, not giving you the hard sell, but I think if you've not got a membership, you're daft. Um, <laughs> I think you are. Um, literally, the, the the advice you get on there. The, the casting directors you get access to these are people whose people tell me on a daily basis they would die to get in front of and i'm like look they tell you in the podcast that i do with them how to get in front of them why are you not listening to this shit so many people email me actually questions that i answer in every single podcast in terms of like these are things that come up time and time again you know what does a casting director want me to say in my email to them and if you have a look at some of the casting directors that i've had on here um, Andy Pryor, one of the biggest in the in the uh, in the industry, got people like Kate Rose James from uh, she castings that Line of Duty. Um, got all the soap casting directors as well. Um, Peter Hunt from Hollyoaks. Um, I mean, there's loads. If we go into the members area and click on uh, ER Rare, where are they features with agents, feature with actors, feature with casting directors? Um, look, there's absolutely shed loads of them. Um, loads and loads of uh, incredible advice from some of the biggest cast directors that are in the industry and they tell you what you've got to do to get in the room um it's really straightforward like i can't make it any simpler for you uh, but yeah get yourself a membership if you've not got a membership already um and it also obviously you know it supports me in, in making more and more content for you guys as well um so yeah i just thought that's giving you some food for thought i know people get a bit overwhelmed with tech techno stuff when it comes to self-tapes um, and they're like, yeah, oh, you know, I wasn't, I don't know how to, you know, use a camera or, you know, this sort of stuff. It's not that hard, honestly. And once you've done it, once you've figured it out on a couple of occasions, 
it's really, really straightforward from then on. Once you've done one self-tape, like the rest, it's quite formulaic unless you get a brief that's really off-piste. And please always, always, always read the brief and particularly read the part as well about the slate. The slate is the part at the start of the tape where you say, hi, my name is Ross Grant. My agent is. I'm reading for the role of such and such a body. Um, because sometimes they will ask you specifically in the brief to give more information than that. Most of them will just want that, but there'll be some that you'll get through. And if you're not careful, you don't read it. They will say things like, we also want your height. We want you to actually say your agent's phone number and email address. Um, we want uh, a two minute chat about you. And it can be a general chat about you, or it can be something very specific to something that is very specific to you. Um, read the brief. Don't just take it for granted that they just want a normal slate because that's tripped people up before. Um, and a casting director generally will not have time to email you back and go, oh, can you give us all this stuff again? Um, it might lose you an opportunity there. So just be careful when stuff comes through. Do read it. Um, loads of comments coming through. Um, in an emergency, I bought a lav, uh, lapel mic for nine quid. Says it, uh, you know, it isn't obviously as good as the road one, but not that bad. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome. You know, honestly, yeah, you know, there will be alternatives. I think road is like wicked. Um, but there are, uh, you know, do some research. There, there will be other stuff on the market. Um, Joe, uh, Mark says, uh, get a kit bag. You can fit in a tripod and two soft boxes. Yeah, those soft boxes look big. They fold down. They fold down really small. Um, so you can carry them around with if you want, and you don't have to keep them up in your house if it's, uh, you know, if, if you you can't keep them up all the time. I ended up keeping my two when I had them in the spare bathroom. Um, people, <laughs> it's pretty dodgy. People came around, they're like, Ross, why have you got lights in your bathroom? What are you filming in here, man? Um, but yeah, I would definitely uh, get, you know, have a look at the soft boxes. Um, Esther says, New Ear is a really good brand. I think that might be the name of my LEDs. Give me a sec. Let me just grab one from around here. I'm not legging it. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still here. Ne Niwa. Niwa? But yeah. Oh, I'm falling over. Yeah, these are, are the new LED ones that I've got. They just fold down at these little bags. Um, Niwa. Um, I think it's Japanese or something, Chinese, but they're really solidly made. I'll show you this. Um, for those on the audio experience, I'm sorry you can't see this, um, but just picture it. I'm opening a square <laughs> black bag. Um, with an LED panel in it. But these are dead small. What I like about these, they just clip to the top of a uh, of a light stand. They've got barn doors on them. So you can flip these open and direct the light a bit more. I mean, as I say, you don't get freaked out though. You don't need these. This is just because I do a lot of video. Um, this is why I invested in these. They weren't that expensive. I think for two, they were probably about 180 quid or something like that. Um, and it's an LED panel. It's got hundreds of LEDs in there. Now, what you can do on the back, see these little uh, little uh, knobs here? You can adjust how much yellow and how much white LED you have. So if you want to warm it up, say, for instance, you had to do a self-tape where it was in the sun and it was supposed to be like a summer scene outside, you can make it really nice and like yellow light and warm. Um, if it was something that would, you know, make more sense to do, you know, in a cool light, you can turn all the yellow off and just have white. So it's just very much just like daylight. Um, so it will give you a little bit more control of what you, uh, you know, what you can do with the lights. But again, I mean, that's just, you know, that's extra stuff. You really don't need that. As long as you're lit well, um, those soft boxes that are 60 quid, you know, are more than adequate. I did tapes with those um, for ages. Oh, I'm pressing buttons. Hang on, what we're doing now? I was pressing buttons with the bag. Hopefully, um, you guys can still see me and hear me. Um, so yeah, that's a you know that's an alternative for uh, for lighting. Uh, let's see what other comments we've got here. Kev says, "Join premium. It's worth every cent. I have transformed my knowledge, which in turn boosts my confidence." Ross did not pay me to say this. Thank you, Kev. Um, everyone should have a premium membership. Honestly, you just should. Um, no one. I'm so surprised. No one else in this industry is is still to this day doing the sort of you know the sort of stuff that we do on that's on this um it's interesting but yeah th there is nothing like it out there um cheers ross this is brilliant it was my task this week to research home self-tape equipment so this is massively helps um the lovely manuel puro also does a great self-tape course yeah he does some like a 30-day course or something anyway you're supposed to do a self-tape a day um He's supposed to be a good guy. I might get him off a podcast at some stage. Uh, one thing I can also advise on cell sites is that even when you're auditioning uh, by cell sites, it's best to learn lines so that your eyes stay focused on camera. Oh, every time, Matt, you know, makes no difference. Don't, you know, 
that's what I think some people do. They want to like put the lines up next to the camera or something and just read them. It's not performing. If you if you have not got the lines down, you cannot perform. And when you are doing this in the luxury of your own home and you've got as many takes as you want, it's no excuse, right? Just take a couple of hours out to just learn the lines. Um, any links we can share for decent lighting? Thanks in advance. So James, yeah, hopefully you saw the um, you saw the stuff on Amazon there. Photo Cell, Photo S E L. Um, have a search on Amazon. Fifty nine ninety nine for two soft boxes. Um, you know, it's it's. It's a total no-brainer for me, really. Um, Angie says, this self-save information is gold dust. I'll be investing. Just bring in your value, Angie. You know what I mean? I'll say it. But I mean, if you want, if you really want to go deep, the podcast, we, it's, we go into more depth on the podcast because there's other things you've really got to think about as well. Who's reading in? That's a real real big thing. Your costume is, you know, is a real big thing. Um, the preparation is a real big thing. Uh, we talk about lighting. We talk about audio. We talk about the cameras. We talk about editing. And, re- and you know what's really valuable as well? We talk about packaging in terms of like actually wrapping the whole thing up and editing it into, into a package and then how you deliver that to the casting director as well. Makes all the difference. Um, I've listened to Ross's voice so much during my daily tasks that I hear his voice in my dreams now. Nicola, oh, I mean, how lucky are you then? <laughs> That's just mental. Um, apologies for that. Alan says, got to go, but great broadcast. Thanks, Alan. I hope you've enjoyed it, mate. Tanika's here as well. Um, Mark says, I just broadcast this live video to my TV. Didn't know I could do that. You're 4K, Ross. You absolutely bloody can, Mark. And I hope I am filling your living room with joy, mate. Fiona says, don't know about you guys, but I can only see the conversation thread moving and Facebook showing still frozen. Don't know what's uh, what's happening for you there, Fiona. Everyone else is, is, is good and it's been perfect for me uh, on my laptop. Um so apologies, yeah, if you've got a dodgy connection tonight. Um, there will be replay of this. Go to face. Um, we can you can watch it on the replay actually on the page after this. Like literally where this video is, will turn into a replay. Um, or if you go to youtube.com forward slash acts on this TV, it will be available tomorrow as a replay as well. Um, Alice says they're all the same, all made in China, all do the same job. Look into the Kelvin K rating of the bulbs and make sure you have some um, some diffusers on the soft boxes. Yeah, the soft boxes should always come with the diffuser. The diffuser is just basically the big, you know, white piece of material really that just diffuses the light, just makes it, you know, much less harsh on your face. Uh, Petch is in the house, all right, Petch. He can vet, he can vouch for how good the soft boxes are. He's got two of them. Um, so uh, so yeah, that's self sites for you for tonight. Do those road mics work with Androids? Yeah, they do, Rick. Um, absolutely, absolutely do, mate. Yeah. Um, I recently did a self set says Julie, but the scene was set in a barn, searching through hay bales. Bit difficult to do in a small room, uh, but now have access to a farmer's barn if I need to use it in the future. Yeah, you know, sometimes go, you know, break all these rules we're talking about. Go into the field. Um, literally, you might have to go into a field uh, for some self takes. A lot of people for the Game of Thrones self takes went well above and beyond. Like really, almost created like you know little mini movies. Um, in the middle of fields fighting with swords and stuff. Some people do that, you know. It's not a guarantee of getting you work. And sometimes, you know what, as well, you can get a cell tape. Like, you can think it's the most perfect thing. Me and Pet did a cell tape for me for a, um, a bank once where they they were looking for, like, to create a commercial like a vlog. Now, I just vlog. So I was like, well, why don't we just create this video for them? And I'll show them exactly what it be, would be like authentically if a vlogger was doing it. And we created like the perfect, basically we finished the advert for them. I edited it even in with the credit cards and all the jargon and everything that was in it. And I went to the audition. I said, listen, um, I'm just going to play this for you. This is my audition. This is it. And um, they went, right. I played it and they went, right. Um, are you available on blah, 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 blah. Right. We want to pencil you for it straight away. I thought, well, basically I just got the job because I proved the point. Um, it was worth quite a bit of money as well um, and I didn't get it they released the pencil I have no idea why but they basically booked me on the spot and then went no so uh, you can do what you think is perfect and still not get the job don't take it to heart it's um, you know all part and parcel of the game um, Steve says I'm all good so that means the, the, the uh, stream is working well um, it works great on my phone tonight but not my laptop says Warren yeah sorry about that people have struggled a little bit but hopefully um, you've got most of this and you can watch the replay I'm crashing the internet, says Tat. <laughs> so popular. I've got like, you know, I think in and out of this broadcast has been a few hundred people, but I'm sure it's not enough to uh, to blow up Facebook. Um, so yeah, so thanks ever so much for people joining me. Um, I want to end by playing a, I'm going to play the full version of that rejection video that I played in the uh, part of in the vlog, um, just so you guys watch it. Um, do go over to my Instagram, at Ross A. Grant and at Acts on This TV. I'm posting a lot to my Instagram stories, a lot behind the scenes stuff going on Acts on This, just ultimately stuff that hopefully will entertain you, maybe inspire you and educate you within the acting industry. Um, do follow us, that would mean the world. Um, share this broadcast with people, 
people go to youtube.com forward slash watch Ross to, you know, watch previous episodes of the vlog. Um, and yeah, this was a video inspired by a rejection that I got recently from the biggest acting opportunity I've had in my life um, for a Warner Brothers and a CBS show out in America. I went to Toronto to screen test for it two weeks ago. I didn't get the job. Um, there was nothing more I could have done. Like, honestly, I can't be bitter about it because like I just did everything that I could. I didn't leave like I think I left everything in the room like I did not walk out of there with anything left in the tank and I was down to the last two and I didn't get it and this is a video inspired by that rejection it's basically um a few points of what I've learned over the last 20 years of being an actor um and facing a lot of rejection and that's not woe me we're all actors and we all face a lot of rejection I think we're incredibly privileged to chase a career that we want to do I think it's massively audacious that we, you know, it is an audacious thing, isn't it, really, that we've, we have decided that, you know what, we want to get paid very, very well, potentially, by doing a job that, to most people, isn't even work, that is something that's actually really enjoyable, you know, would bring with it lots of trappings, if we have a lot of success in this industry, um, lots of nice perks, um, and thus it should be hard. You should face rejection. It annoys me how soft people are sometimes when it comes to, you know, complaining about this industry. Oh, it's really tough. You know, oh, it's not fair. Of course it's not. And it shouldn't be. It's, it's so audacious that this is what you have decided out of the millions of things in the world to do with your life that you want to do and you actually have the opportunity to chase it. You, you're after a 1% life. Literally a life that is better than 99% of the other 7.8 billion people out there if you, you know, achieve what you want to achieve within this industry and the wealth and the adoration and all, everything else that would come with that, um, it should be difficult. So don't, you know, don't be soft. That's probably not a politically correct thing to say <laughs> in your 2019 world. But I'm like, listen, come on. You know, if you get a rejection, it ain't the end of the world. No one's just diagnosed you with a terminal illness. Get over it. Crack on. You know, crying about it is not going to get you your next job. Um, so, yeah, watch this. Um, go over to my Instagram if you want to leave some comments on it. It's on there, at Ross A. Grant. Um, and uh, I'm just looking for it. There it is. Um, and I'll see you next week, Monday, 9 p.m. I'm just going to double check the comments before I go. Um, uh, it's a brilliant, it's a must-watch vlog, says Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. Wise words. You're so grounded, said Nicoletta. Thanks, Nicoletta. Um, appreciate that. Brennan says, won't be at the meet-up this Saturday. Oh, a quick, yeah, last thing before I do go. I can definitely go in now. Um, this Saturday, Manchester, 11 a.m., Till 2 p.m., uh, we're doing the Manchester meetup at Home Theatre near Deansgate train station. I'm hosting that one, 11 a.m. till 2 p.m. Um, at yeah Home Theatre in Manchester. Um, it's free. Just come and get yourself a coffee. We just chew the fat about the acting industry and help each other set goals, basically, and just help each other get further in our careers. Um, we ho hold one in London as well. Mel and Wendy hold one at BFI um, South Bank at Benugo Bar, BFI South Bank, 11 till 2. Um, again, free. Go down, get yourself a coffee, get involved with those guys. It just means that, like... We're not doing all of this just online. Like it's great to have this connection online. You know, hundreds of people have tuned into this tonight. Hugely grateful for that. Um, but there's nothing better than meeting people in real life and really forging proper relationships. So many things in this industry and life are predicated on the quality of your relationships. So let's get out in the world and actually, um, you know, make those relationships concrete. Um, so do get involved with that. I will put the events up on facebook.com forward slash ads on this TV. It's not there right now, but I will uh, sort that out. Um, so yeah, London is, uh, is this, oh, it's this Saturday. So the, both of them are this Saturday, Fiona. So Manchester and London this Saturday, the 7th of September. They happen on the first Saturday of every single month. Same day, both Manchester and London, 11 till 2. Um, so yeah, get yourself down to uh, to those. Uh, right, here's this uh, video on rejection. Hope you uh, enjoy it and it might give you the kick up the ass that you need to uh, go and get shit done this week. Anything could happen this week, brand new week. Get out there, make it happen. Until next time, bye for now. So the film My Toughest Battle is about a boxer suffering with um, depression. No, that isn't it. That isn't the video. <laughs> it's this video. Bye for now. The past does not equal your future, right? Yeah, you didn't get the outcome that you wanted this time, but it doesn't mean that you failed. After recently facing rejection from an acting job that I really freaking wanted, I thought I would share three quick tips that helped me put this disappointment behind me and turn that adversity into advantage, right? If you've recently experienced a rejection and you've been struggling to move forward, listen up. Number one, first of all, I need you to realize that every no you get is one step closer 
to a yes. Success really is a numbers game. The more acting opportunities that you can cultivate for yourself, the higher the likelihood of you converting one into a job, right? The worst thing that you can do right now is stall and dwell on an outcome you cannot change. Life is all about alternatives and you have two options right now, okay? You can allow this no to paralyze you or you can use it to drive you forward towards that next yes. You owe it to yourself right now to get up and seek out that next opportunity. Number two, sometimes you've just got to get knocked down lower than you have ever been in order to stand up taller and stronger than you have ever been before. If you really wanted that gig, you know, and you've hit your rock bottom, you need to use that right now as the foundation to build your future success upon. We honestly, honestly, we do not grow through the good times. We grow through the bad times. The adversity you are facing right now is a real and genuine opportunity for you to become a better human being. The most successful people, not just in the acting industry, but on this planet, have all faced massive bouts of rejection. So channel that negative energy you may be feeling right now into motivation you know, and a determination to win next time. By doing so, you're gonna up your resilience, you're gonna strengthen your mental toughness, and you're gonna set yourself back on the path to greatness. Now three, lastly, look at this rejection for what it is, right? No more, no less, just what it is. Ultimately, you lost out on a job, nothing more. Stop playing out what might have been, what it might have led to. Those things didn't happen and there will be more jobs. Instead, look at what you gained from this process. New contacts, no doubt stronger relationships. Perhaps you visited somewhere for the first time and have faith there will be a next time too. Rejection is evidence that you are pushing your limits. If you're not facing rejection in life, you are living inside of your comfort zone. And as crazy as it may sound, you should be seeking out more rejection, you know, taking more risks. The more risks you'll take, the more rewards you'll open yourself up to, all right? Wear each rejection as a medal, proving that you tried. And lastly, lastly, um, just remember that your past does not equal your future, right? Yeah, you didn't get the outcome that you wanted this time, but it doesn't mean that you failed, right? I believe there are no failures. As long as you learned something from this experience, you actually succeeded, right? And this success is only gonna help improve your chances of booking that role next time. The reality is we all face rejection as actors. We just don't talk about it on social media. So chances are you feel like you're the only one not working right now. The truth is only 8% of actors are in employment at any one time. So in reality, if you're facing rejection, you're in the majority, not the minority. And taking action is the only way you're gonna get into that minority. So get up, get out, and make it happen. Bye for now.